Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. Uh, well, we are going to further our investigation into this SunFun Kids battery and the SunFun Kids bag that came with it. So let's go check it out. All right, well, the first thing that we, I kind of want to do is take a full 360 view of this uh, SunFun Kids battery. I believe that is the front. We have the side here with one of the nylon straps and we have a bunch of information uh, about each cell. Date of manufacturing is uh, August 6th, 2022. Uh, continuous watt test, I mean this is kind of like the test results I guess of it all. Uh, 115 watts and uh, capacity is 275 amp hours. Uh, we also have a QR code here so let's actually see where that goes. There we go. All right, and it looks like it takes us, oh, well, look at that. It takes us right to uh, the testing information of this battery. It, it tells us how, you know, who, who did the tests. That's pretty nice. Uh, warranty information. Uh, the warranty expires March 28th, 2031. I can also download the manual. Uh, there's contact information. So this is pretty nice. It's a nice little QR code that gets you more information about the particular battery that you bought. All right, and then we saw the back side already. This is, well, I'm not sure if this is the back side or the front, but this is the side with all the information on it. And then this other side is just blank. And I'm sure the bottom's blank, yep. And then we've seen the top. So, looking at the top, I see, I see four screws here and they look like hex, hex screws. So we're gonna go ahead and unscrew those and see what that does. All right. Looks like we got two negative and two positive uh, conductors. They're both uh, six gauge wire. Uh, here's our BMS. I like how the SunFun kits, the logo is right there. It's, you know, it's everywhere on here. This is really nice. Here's the Bluetooth module right here. Uh, temperature sensor right here. We'll go ahead and test that to make sure that it works and we're going to actually look on the app to see what it does and then there's probably another one there's actually another one taped taped to the cells right here i believe yes yeah, so there's another one taped to the cells i'm not going to pull that one but we're going to go ahead and test this uh this temperature to make sure that it that it goes down i really don't want to go any further because i don't want to uh do anything else but we can see we can see all the cells underneath. I mean, it's a nice clean setup. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a, uh, an ice packet and uh, I'm gonna get this really cold and we're gonna see what it does on the app. All right, shows that we're at 99.99 state of charge. So this battery's totally full. And what we're gonna do is we're going to put a cold pack on this temperature sensor and we're gonna see if the app reads it. Okay, so I'm gonna start applying it right now. Yeah, so that, yeah, the case temperature, yeah, it's going down and down and down. So let's, let's see if the, uh, if it still says that it will, if it's switched on charging. Yeah, in the app, it still says that uh, charging is enabled, but let's go ahead and try to charge it and see if it'll accept the charge. Yeah, because it's at, it's at 15 degrees right now. 15 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, temperature says 14 degrees Fahrenheit, so let's go ahead and put a charge on there. And even though the battery's full, it should try to charge for a few minutes. Okay. Yeah, because the volts are still 13.47, uh, and it would it would have shot up to 14.6 uh, if this would have tried to charge at all. Let's go ahead and try that again. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Volts are, we're gonna, we see that the volts are 13.47. Uh, and when we connect this charger, the charger is acting like the, there's, there's nothing on here. So I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna go ahead and take off this ice pack now. And we'll warm it up with the charger on there. 
Okay, I'm warming it up with my hand. And look at that, as soon as it gets over, over 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you can see that the charger kicks on and it's, and it's turning on. The low temperature charging on this battery definitely works and it reads it in real time on the app, which is really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this battery back together. Super easy, yeah. Those four screws, those four screws were all you, all you needed to take off the top of this case and get you know to the internals. Uh, there's more screws on the side and I'm guessing that is if you wanted to take the entire battery pack out and, and disassemble the whole thing. All right, now that we know that that battery does have uh, cold charging protection, and it's in real time with the app. Let's go ahead and check out this battery bag. Uh, the nice thing about it is it's heated. So let's look at the inside real quick. All right, on the inside, it looks like there's a big heating pad on the bottom. And that totally makes sense because, I mean, heat rises. So if you heat the bottom, it's gonna heat the whole bag. Positive and negative cables right here. And then we also have, um, a temperature sensor for the bag itself. And then on the side, this right here is actually a button. And so when we connect the battery to it, it's going to light up. And I believe uh, the warmer you want the bag, the higher you set the number. So uh, let's go ahead and try it out. I think the easiest way to get this battery in here without crushing all these cables is to go ahead and push these through the ring first. That way they're not in the way. That, that way we have plenty of room to get this battery in. Because it might be a tight fit, I don't know. Let's see. Let's see the terminals, we need to make sure they're on that side. And this bag doesn't really sit straight. I mean, it's probably because it's brand new, but let's go ahead and just try to Fit it in there. It feels very insul very well insulated. All right, ready? Three. Oh, let's get this temperature sensor out of the way. Three, two, one, go! Oh yeah, plenty of room. Oh, easy. That was that was a lot easier than I thought it was going to be. Let's just go ahead and connect these sensors. Let's go ahead and put this uh, this temperature sensor just down here. And actually, I want this temperature sensor to kind of be at the top because we know that heat rises, so the, the coldest part of the bag should be at the top. Let's go ahead and press this button and see if it does anything. Oh, you have to long press it? All right, long press. That turns it on, and I'm guessing a long press will probably turn it off. Yep, so a long press turns it on and off. And it's set at one. And I'm guessing if you just short press it, yep, two. I like how the, the colors change. Four and five. So I'm gonna put it on five. I'm gonna put, I'm gonna put a, uh, a thermometer on top and we'll see what five gives us I'm gonna let it sit for like 15 minutes and we'll see how, what the temperature is when we come back. All right, well, you know me and uh, the lack of proper tools that I have when it comes to measuring temperature. So what I have is actually a, uh, a meat thermometer. So I'm gonna put this in there and we're gonna see what it, uh, what it does. Okay, the probe reads 70 degrees. So we're gonna go ahead and zip up this bag. You can see that the setting uh, on the Sun Fun Kits heated bag is at five. Our probe uh, is at 70 degrees right here. So we are gonna come back in 15 minutes and see what the temperature is. And while this thing is running, I wanted to show you that uh, the, the bag is using 90, over 90 watts of electricity. So it's using about, it's using seven amps to heat that bag. Uh, so you gotta keep that loss into consideration if you are going to use this bag for an extended amount of time. All right, well, it's been about 15 minutes and uh, and the temperature on the top of the bag has gone up uh, one degree. So 
Uh, and you know what? I, I'm not surprised by that. It's not like I'm trying to cook this battery. I'm just trying to keep it warm. But I'm going to go ahead and slide this, uh, this thermometer down to the bottom. And we're going to see what it reads on the bottom down there. So let's do that. 120 degrees. So let's go ahead and stop it there. I mean, it's still going up. I was correct in saying that only the bottom heats up on this bag. Uh, but the bag itself is very well insulated. And the bottom, I mean, it was getting past 120 degrees. So that would keep this battery nice and toasty. But yeah, this bag, uh, this bag is a nice, nice accessory uh, for these batteries. And it's, it fits the battery perfectly. It also has these two grommet holes right here for your positive and negative cables to come through to connect to your inverter. So yeah, they really thought this through when, uh, when they made this bag. I like it. Okay, and then the last thing I want to do is I am connecting up um, the biggest 12 volt inverter I have. We're gonna do a really large amp draw on this battery to see how well it performs. I'm gonna go ahead and hook up a 1500 watt uh, heater to it. We'll see how we we'll see how well that does and I think at the same time I'm gonna try I'm gonna try the the benchmark discharge test again Because it in the first part it didn't fare too well for some reason it didn't work really at all um, Unfortunately, and I am I am using the latest version of the app. I'm using 4.2 So I'm gonna go ahead and try it again, and it, this time there's not gonna be any other monitors going on we're just going to do a, a large draw and we're going to test it on the discharge, dis, dis, char, discharge test. Man, I can't talk right now. So let's just go ahead and do that and uh, let's see if stuff works. All right. Okay, we got our heater. We got it plugged in. Uh, it's a 1500 watt heater. Um, how about we go ahead and use a kilowatt also plugged into it there we go let's go ahead and put this kilowatt on there we go plug in the heater so let's go ahead and just power this thing up all the way to 1500 watts Oh, oh look at that. It says test is ended. Watts are too high. Decrease battery load and try keeping and try again keeping watts between 200 and 800. So it will not do a test in the app if uh, if the wattage is too high. So, okay. And my heater. Huh. My heater turned off. Okay, uh, well the battery shut down, so it stopped working. So let's go ahead and try that again, because I'm surprised that it didn't work. I mean, 1500 watts, 1500 divided by 12.8, um, that's 117 amps. This inverter, or this battery should be able to do 125 amps. So let's go ahead and get a, uh, Get a multimeter and measure the amps that it's pulling. We might be we might be going overboard. Okay, yeah. Currently the amp draw is five, pretty much five and a half. Uh, that's just from the, for the inverter. It takes about yeah, it takes about sixty or seventy watts just to keep this thing on idle. So we're gonna go ahead and turn this thing on. Let's go ahead and turn it on high again and see what our amp draw is. If it goes over 125, that's why it's turning off. Oh yeah, 150. Yeah, and it, and it cuts off after about, what, five, five, 10 seconds? Which is good, that's exactly what it should do. We're gonna go ahead and try the discharge, discharge test again. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a halogen light. Yeah, I'm just going to, I'm going to plug in a halogen light, a halogen light, um, and I'm just going to run it for like an hour because we already know that the, 
it did pass the capacity test. You know, it showed 275 amp hours. Um, so I'm just gonna plug in a halogen lamp and I'm just gonna let it run for like an hour. And I just wanna see if the discharge test equals out to what it, you know, I wanna see if it's actually accurate. So let's just go ahead and do that. Okay, this time uh, the test is running. There you go, check it out real quick. The test is running, I have this halogen lamp running, it's super bright. Uh, it shows that we're, we're pulling about 41.7 amps. And on this, it shows that, yeah, we're pulling 41.14 amps. So the amperages are, are dead on. So that's good. Yeah, the wattage coming out of the inverter on the AC side is uh, 428 watts. But over here, it's showing 300, uh, 533. So yeah, there's like 100 watts of loss. I'm gonna let it run for an hour, uh, and then our, our amp hours should be, you know, right around 41. So uh, we'll come back in an hour, confirm that, and then we're done. All right, it's been an hour, and we are gonna look at Oh my God, are you kidding me? Uh, and now it says unable to connect, but the battery is still, I mean, the light's still running. You know, I am done with trying to use this software. It's, it's irritating. Yeah, this thing's just frozen up. So, you know what? I give up on that software. Uh, it's nice. The rest of the software is really nice. I like how it keeps track of everything in real time, even the temperatures. I like how you can change settings. Uh, but that benchmark, that benchmark thing, I, it's just annoying me now. Like, I don't even want to try to use it because I don't have faith in it. I mean, I can use, I can use a shunt and I would know that it will work. And if it doesn't work like in, it, like it did in the, in the part one video, uh, I know that I can fix it and then it will work. So, but this software, even though um, I, I work with computers all day at work, that software, I mean, first it was saying that there was an error with the file. Then it said that, you know, then there's all these stipulations on, well, you have to discharge it between 200 watts and 800 watts. And now it's saying unable to connect. I mean, it's just like, I want something that's going to be 100% all the time. So in my book, I'm just gonna use the hardware shunt, and uh, and for that software, I'm I will I will definitely use that software, but I will use it for just real time monitoring, not not testing. So, okay, uh, I think I'm done here. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this light off here. God, it's so bright. There we go. All right, I'm done. Uh, this SunFun Kits battery, it is nice. It's very compact for the 275 amp hours that you get. And it is a tested 275 amp hours. It has cold charge temperature protection. Um, you know, you can get a heated bag for it. I'm, you know, I'm not sure what the cost of the heated bag is, but it was getting up past 120 degrees on the bottom there. So that thing does work, but it does use hundred Watts on that highest setting. Uh, overall, the, how the battery can be taken apart and uh, and serviced uh, that was very easy the one thing about the battery that i still don't really like is the the m8 bolts on top i wish they were the spring washer and washer combination and not the threaded grip like the the, the serrated grip at the you know on the on the bolt uh, i just feel like that's not as secure but that's just my personal opinion yeah, with all that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. Uh, sorry it was broken up into two parts, but it was just getting out of control. So uh, if you like this video, please hit that like button. Um, if you have any questions about how I did the tests or anything about the battery, uh, please leave them in the comments. And if you like this channel, please consider subscribing. It really helps out. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye.